Oh, let's have a profile. Should we have a profile? Let's have a profile. Let's do it. This week, we've got a beautiful boy by who goes by the name. <laughs> beautiful boy. <laughs> beautiful boy. Oi, don't disagree with me. It's David Ginola. David Ginola. Uh-huh. <laughs> what, what a man. What a, what a beautiful man. David Desire. Head Mark head. Ginola. His middle name was Desire. I don't know. Call it to some people. <laughs> um, if it's not, it should be. Born on the 25th of January 1967. Just six ah, months. Just six months before yeah. the summer and after. Sorted. Oof. Yeah. My Oof. goodness. It couldn't have happened without him. Seg. I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, another of the Premiership's uh, early uh, foreign stars. Pioneers. Pioneers. Le Magnifique. Mm. As he was. Uh, I remember he was linked with Arsenal for ages and ages before he came to England. I'm still gutted he never played for us. Yeah, <laughs> even I don't now. Know now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, at the age of ooh, 45, I think. Uh, started his career at, uh, at Toulon in uh, 1985 and made a bit of a name for himself down there as a teenage prodigy. He was there for a few years and moved on to Racing Club de Paris and then Brest in the French First Division or League 1, uh, as uh, we call it. Um, and then in 92. He signed for Paris Saint-Germain, which is really where the rest of Europe, for my money, um, yeah. started to notice him. Because he, he had a couple of games against Barcelona in the Champions he, he League. Did, he did, yes. He roasted them. Played yeah. really, really him well. Him and uh, George Weyer. Yeah, God. They, they, they got to the semi-finals. Um, 94, 95, I think it was. was. that kind of like when his international career like, yeah. s- uh, happened uh, and then uh, stalled uh, massively? <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, well, at, at PSG, um, you know, very entertaining style of play. Lit up Lit the... Lit's a nice uh, sponsor. So yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Is that right? mm. uh, Very the, the, European. Very European. The Parc des Princes. Uh, bloody loved him. Mm. Uh, he won the French Cup while at PSG. Was named French Footballer of the Year and Players Player of the Year in '94. Um, it wasn't all roses for Ginola in France. Of course, his time with the national team all but came to an end. Um, quite cruelly, really. I mean, he only got 17 French caps. Um, for a player of his quality, mm. he should have at least double yeah. that. Um, but the, 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 the moment was uh, uh, when France were playing Bulgaria at home in their final game of their uh, World Cup qualification campaign for USA 94 it was France only needed a point mm. they went one goal up uh, Bulgaria pegged them back so it was one all um, France had a free kick right in the corner right at the death uh, you know seconds to go and the ball was passed to Ginola and he people say he should have just kept the ball in the corner mm. yeah. but he tried to cross it I think it was Cantona in the centre and he, and he mm. hit it you know a bit over his it. head sorry he over hit it he did he? yeah yeah and it went to the Bulgarian right full back who then passed it who had everything to do to who had yeah. everything <laughs> to do who then had the whole field of play in front of him <laughs> um, he then passed it I think someone wins, knocked over the top guy comes in bang scores mm. 2-1 France are, France are out of the, the qualification what Ginola sh- should have done was covered every other position on the pitch yeah <laughs> this to me is, is, is one of the um, biggest moments in football of, of where someone has been has made a scapegoat oh absolutely I mean yeah, like really, it, it shocking. really shockingly yeah really bad I mean Gerard Julio was, was in charge of, of the French side and so what happened was if you haven't seen the goal yes it was that went to the full back but of course he's played it forward the, the ball zipped around a bit in the midfield then there's a lovely ball over the top that, that bypasses the French fullback um, Kostadinov I think it is nips mm. in well, and then thunders the ball brilliantly in off the bar from we saw how good that Bulgarian, Bulgarian team was in, yeah. in USA 94 you know they were a great great team yeah but for that moment I mean presumably there were some moments previously in the campaign that didn't quite go to plan hence yeah. they needed a draw mm. to, to, to go through and Julier blamed the whole thing against you know I think he said he committed a crime against the team and he hardly played for the national yeah. side that's again. outrageous it, for a manager to say it, that it, that's but then, so but then, from but, but then you also look at like like Cantona's international career wasn't really that much to true but, 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 but Cantona was because he was a bit of a bad boy mm. and his reputation went down you know it, it's similar not quite similar but say someone like Joey Barton kind of talked his way out of more England caps you know and yeah, do yeah. silly things mm. that was more Cantona was, was this was it was it was Ginola. one specific incident mm. exactly and it was it was piss poor management who just blamed him for mm. um, for, for that really but like nearer the nearer the end of his career like when he when I'm sure come on to it, when he um, he joined Spurs and stuff you mm. got to remember how strong that French team were, were oh true yeah well, in 98 they didn't certainly. necessarily need him as <clears throat> much as he did when he was when he actually committed that yeah, a but crime against mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but he should more have more than seventeen caps, I think. Yes, I think that's fair, so. um, but back at PSG, they had an, assembled an excellent side. They won uh, the league for only the second time in the club's history. 
But you think of PSG being one of the big sides. Oh, okay, they've had a lot of money recently. But I think it was that team that mm. make people, perhaps of our age, think, mm, think PSG that, yeah. uh, are a big side. So they reached semi final of the Champions League, uh, beaten by, um, I think it was Capello's Milan. Um, uh, but Ginola was great um, I- I- in that tournament. Um, so in, in 1995, I think he'd had enough of France and was ready for a move. And Kevin Keegan signed him for, for Newcastle United. It's interesting. I mean, the, the only parallel with that, I suppose, or the, the most obvious parallel, is after France 98, when David Beckham was sent off for kicking Diego Simeone, mm. and he was made a scapegoat of as well. But he rode it out, didn't he? But that first, yeah. you know, but that's a little bit more next season. Uh, you know, obviously they you yeah. know, went on to win the treble, but like mm. and England are bereft of a pr- <laughs> an excellent yeah, talent. Yeah, he as went well. through some. <laughs> Some real shit, David yeah, Beckham. Yeah. Ginola just wasn't having it; just went straight away. It's mm. interesting. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, a little bit after, but yes, it was reasonably soon after. Um, I mean, he dazzled the northeast of England on many occasions. Did he not, Pete? I, I liked him as a footballer <laughs> and, <laughs> and, a f- and a friend. And in- <laughs> he's unaware of that, but um, <laughs> he was an integral part of the entertainers team that we profiled them um, not that long ago. Scored a few decent goals. It's, yeah, it's, it's safe to say against Manchester United, a lovely one. Yeah, in the, the five nil. Yeah. But it's the one against Ferenc Varos, which you want to talk about. Just lovely. Just, <laughs> I think it, it starts off as a corner. It yeah. comes to him. He takes it on his knee. Mm-hmm. A defender is approaching at speed. He drags a volley across the defender's body, yes. leaving him with loads of space to just open up his body and execute a glorious left foot volley, I do believe, into the top right-hand corner. In off the bar. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> 4 nil to the Newcastle. That match ended, I do believe. But uh, what, what, what a goal. What a goal. Asprey scored two. He couldn't get in the headlines. No. <laughs> there was only one headline that day, as it tends to be, Jim. <laughs> um, it, it was an f- incredible play, Ginola. Um, touch of the Berbatovs. Mm. Yeah. If you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Actually, for, for, uh, for that position for that was winger. kind of all about spe- uh, all about um, speed back in the day you, yeah. know, you had your Keith Gillespie on the other wing and him would just be like just dawdling up the left yeah. just yeah. kind of like tricky taking it yeah just basically step whip across him as well yeah definitely um, something like just artistic right the way yes yeah, it's mm. beautiful mm. but him like him and like Les Fern and linking up to us it's just Lovely, lovely, right, lovely, lovely. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> moment. I love these moments. <laughs> he gets a bit <laughs> flustered. Um, Nick, Nick Gollo. After his first away game um, for the club, it was away to Sheffield Wednesday. And they were on the coach home. They'd won well. Ginola had scored. Lovely goal. Uh, Newcastle were top of the league. Um, it's my favourite. It's probably one of my favourite footballing stories. Do you think? Uh, it's, it's got everything. It's got a sort of real sort of like. I've misjudged this, <laughs> so, <laughs> which I love. Oh, am I, not, am I not meant to do that here? It's kind of, <laughs> yeah. um, so it's a job well done, um, and they're all pleased with themselves. And Ginola said he, um, when he played for PSG, he'd have a, a cigarette before and after the game. And so uh, he was on the team bus. I mean, he's not even waiting for the coach. You know, he's on the coach, sitting at the back, and he's thinking, ah. You know, we, I think we've done well today. So he so he, he he sparks up a cigarette, and the team are just like, ah, what, what, what's he doing? And they're like, Gaffer, Gaffer, look what's happening in the back. And so uh, Keegan, David, he's having a ciggy. <laughs> <laughs> so Keegan uh, had a little word with him, basically saying, no, no, David, uh, footballers in England don't don't smoke. So, uh, <laughs> but, certainly don't do it on the team. But, but as you know, I like, noticed he said that on the way home, the coach stopped at a fish and chip shop, and everyone got like a fish supper and a chocolate. <laughs> you know, he's just like, hang on. There was an unsavoury incident in a lay by. <laughs> <laughs> you get it in any time. <laughs> Bloody hell. You're getting it in Terry McDermott's hair for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it already stinks. Oh dear! <laughs> but um, but he was brilliant for Newcastle, wasn't he? I just he was just he just gl- he, he glided, didn't he? Yeah. He didn't run. He glided. Glid. What a, what a what, but that touch of his, you know. Again, we talk about Berbatov's touch. Yeah, it's true. Mm. He had that sort of ability to just suck the ball out of the air, and yeah. just make it do what his brain said with his feet. Caress is a word you'd use with original in so many different uh, ways. Um, was, like Fernand didn't stay that long no, in Newcastle. No. Like which shows it, such an impact. Like which shows again, games, it, yeah, games? like two seasons, was it? Because yeah. in my head, when I picture him, he's wearing a Newcastle. Yeah, he played more for Spurs, Spurs, I think. Yeah, Spurs, yeah. yeah. He, he did. Was. Well, he, when, when Keegan left and Dalglish took over, it was never really going to uh, <laughs> be a good fit, was it? <laughs> no. So Dalglish um, went on his way, um, uh, and uh, his fancy L'Oreal hair, hair uh, went for, for a move to Tottenham in 97, and he, he still loved down at White Hart Lane as well. Of course. I mean, my goodness, he was um, great there. scoring some great he was goals. Good. I've come to the conclusion. <laughs> yeah, I, I Sounds as if he's about to enter the Dean Windus Hall of Fame. Well, for that goal against Barnsley in the in the cup, he, he deserves it. Remember mm. that one? He was out on the left and just mm. thought, 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. I'm it going was... past you. Yeah. I'm going past you. I'm <laughs> going past you. I'm going past you again. Yeah. What was great though, because he was obviously quite left footed, mm. he does everybody with the left, like it's proper yeah. in and out kind of job. Mm. And then it forced him on the right, and he actually finishes it quite nicely. It was w- almost. The defenders were almost lined up like it was a slalom. Yes. Mm. Like yes. a sort of perfect slalom goal. Absolutely. When, and when he sort of like used to smash the balls in, I think. Um, when like when I think it gave Lauren Robert Lauren Robert a lot more um, rope to hang himself with because w- I think it Lauren Robert made people remember David Ginner yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they sort of went oh we've got a brilliant left wing who can yeah. smash the ball in from anywhere <laughs> this is what we could have had <laughs> absolutely um, he won the League Cup at Spurs and won the Players Player of the Year the Football Writers Player of the Year in ninety nine at the age of thirty two ninety nine yeah. loads of stuff happened in English football that year as we know yeah. Mm. Remind me. United did all right. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I it was a magical night in Barcelona, if I remember right. Yeah, now. that's right. I do apologise. Um, but yeah, incredible that you won both. As I say, at the age of 32, for not one of the, the top four sides as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely marvellous. Um, he left Spurs kind of against his wishes, really, in, in 2000. He was sold to Aston Villa. Um, and a- another interesting relationship with with the manager John Gregory this time um, was struck up Gregory often commented about Ginola in the press and he, do you remember that time when he suggested that he was carrying a bit of excess weight mm. and soon after um, Ginola scored a great volley for if Villa if you will not let me smoke uh, I am I do lose this weight <laughs> <laughs> but he scored he scored a great volley for Villa and he removed his top and just flecked yeah. <laughs> <laughs> balotelli <laughs> it was great it really <laughs> It really was. It really was. There's your excess away. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he played. Um, you know, a fair few times. Of he wasn't like, a people person, was he, John Gregory? <laughs> no, <laughs> he really wasn't. <laughs> Not a man manager. Um, in 2002, um, he signed for Everton, but he was mid 30s now. Only played a, a handful of games there, and. I think was it David Moyes take over and he's not really Moyes type of player no Moyes put a bullet in that horse's head yeah he did um, but he finished playing in 2002 and has done a bit of acting since uh, retiring uh, and also pops up every now and then um, in the football media world mm. Um, mm. but always uh, nice to see him he well, really it, is yeah. pops up. does a bit of BBC does he do a BBC does a bit yeah, of BBC a bit of match every the now and yeah you're right it is when you see him you think ah and he's still got that lovely accent as well mm. yeah um, beautiful voice yeah, beautiful, beautiful voice beautiful man beautiful playing style and then he comes to the Dean Windows Hall of Fame <laughs> that is you know that ladies and gentlemen